Welcome to my presentation. I'm Pei Ren, a PhD student from University of Alberta. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about typing errors in factual knowledge graphs, severity, and possible ways out. First, I'd like to start with factual knowledge graphs. Factual knowledge graphs is a way to organize factual knowledge. And facts are organized in entity relation entity tuples. Most of the common factual knowledge graphs, such as DBpedia, are created using some semi-automatic methods. Usually in knowledge graphs, entities are assigned to different types, and those types are organized in a taxonomy, which is just a tree structure representing the hierarchy of types. Unfortunately, there are errors in this type information. For example, peyote, an animal, is typed as a company. And I hope you all agree with me that HTML is definitely not a programming language. However, it's typed as a programming language in DBpedia. So how bad are things? We did an estimation on DBpedia version 2016 October, and the results showed that Overall, around 27% of the coarse grain types are incorrect, and for certain fine grain types, the error rate could be as high as around 70%. And to make things worse, these knowledge graphs that are imperfect have been built into knowledge-enhanced AI systems, for example, some question-answering systems, recommendation systems, and knowledge-enhanced language models. And apart from that, it's being used as a benchmark for machine learning tasks, such as semi-supervised task classification, as well as several other tasks in the knowledge graph community. So the problem we would like to solve is, given a knowledge graph where entities may have some potentially noisy type labels, we'd like to find those entities that have wrong type labels. And this is actually a challenging problem. First, because of the high ratio of type errors, unsupervised methods do not work very well. And second, there is a huge cost to obtain enough training data for supervised methods because of the large number of types and entities. Existing methods are either supervised or unsupervised, depending on whether or not they use human annotated gold labels. Examples of unsupervised methods include outlier detection and noise models. The difference here is that noise models also leverage the noisy labels, but neither of them perform well on this specific task due to the high error rate. And supervised classification in this case is also unscalable. So what we want here is something that can fully leverage all the information we already have in the dataset. And it should also require some supervision to overcome the effectiveness of unsupervised methods. But the amount of annotation should be minimum. So what we propose here lies in the middle ground of supervised and unsupervised methods. We propose to use a combination of semi-supervised classification and classification with noise model. First, let's talk about noise model. What we do here is to fit a model that predicts the original noisy label for a given entity. Th this model we fit has two components. The first one is an ordinary classifier that tries to predict the true label. And on top of that classifier, there is the noise model. The noise model is a simplified model of how the labels got corrupted. It tries to capture the transition probability from true label to noisy label. The classifier we used was designed to utilize the heterogeneous information about an entity, including the text description of an entity, which is captured by BERT, and the surface form of an entity captured by a character level RNN. And finally, graph structures such as properties of an entity 
captured by a bag of word model. We also incorporated virtual adversarial training, an important technique in semi-supervised classification. Virtual adversarial training is a term added to the loss function. So basically, for each entity in the embedding space, virtual adversarial training forces its neighbors to have the same output from the model. And you can see, during this process, there's no label involved. So our model can learn from the dataset without being distracted by noisy labels. And to select entities for annotation, we adopted the uncertainty sampling strategy to actively choose the entities that the model is most unsure about. Finally, we dynamically adjusted the learning rate for each entity label pair. For each entity, we retrieve the pre-trained word embeddings for the entity name and the label, and computed the cosine similarity. If the entity name and the label are similar, we will put more weight on this pair because we believe that the label is more likely to be correct. To sum up, all these components we have ensures that we fully leverage the information we have in the dataset without requiring extra supervision. And the active learning strategy ensures that we only use a minimum amount of annotations. For evaluation, we chose DBpedia version 2016 October and only kept 17 of the most common top-level types. For the training set, we did some balancing to make sure there are exactly 10,000 entities per type. There are only noise labels in the training set. And during the active learning process, up to 200 entities were annotated with gold labels. After training the models, we used the model to identify wrong entity types in a test set with around 4,000 manually annotated entities. The performance is measured by the precision recall and F1 score for identifying errors. And it's measured at several stages during the active learning process. With only 80 annotations, our model achieved an F1 score of 0.72, while the number is 0.35 for supervised classification and 0.57 for semi-supervised classification. When only using noise models, the F1 score is 0.54. Ablation studies show that components like virtual adversarial training and dynamic learning rate are contributing to the performance. We also did a comparison of active learning strategies and found that uncertainty sampling performed better than error rate reduction at this task. When there are more training iterations, the model tend to fit noisy labels and degrade the performance. This coincides with the finding that noisy labels are harder to learn, so they are being fit later in the training process. When there are more annotations, semi-supervised classification is a more suitable choice because it won't be affected by noisy labels. We also evaluated unsupervised methods like outlier detection. For the input of the outlier detection algorithms, we concatenated pre-trained Wikipedia 2VAC and RDF 2VAC embeddings. We also designed the neural network to reduce the dimensionality of embeddings by optimizing with triplet loss. The evaluation was performed type by type, and the dataset is from a previous work. We tested different combinations of representations and outlier detection algorithms, and the results are not very satisfactory. So our conclusion here is fully unsupervised paradigm is not a suitable choice for the task here. To recap, in this work, we uncovered the ubiquitous entity type errors in knowledge graphs. 
We also reviewed previous approaches and explained why they are unfavorable. Finally, we proposed an effective and scalable method to detect type errors. Our code dataset and preprint can be found on GitHub. I do want to acknowledge that the visual style of my presentation is in imitation of soon-to-be Professor Manzor. Thanks again for joining. If you have any questions, feel free to post them on the conference forum or send us an email. Thank you.